Welcome to St. Paul Cathedral. We invite you to pray with us as we celebrate Saints Fabian and Sebastian. Our celebrant is Father Chris Stubna. Please join in singing hymn number 686, Lord of All Hopefulness, 686. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. As we prepare now to celebrate worthily these sacred mysteries, we call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness, for mercy, and for peace. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, Glory of your priests, grant we pray that helped by the intercession of your martyr, St. Fabian, we may make progress by communion in the faith and by worthy service. And grant us, we pray, O Lord, a spirit of fortitude, so that taught by the glorious example of your martyr, St. Sebastian, we may learn to obey you rather than men, through Christ our Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Melchizedek, king of Salem and priest of God Most High, met Abraham as he returned from his defeat of the kings and blessed him. And Abraham apportioned him a tenth of everything. His name first means righteous king, and he was also king of Salem, that is, king of peace. With our father, mother or ancestry, without beginning of days or end of life, thus made to resemble the Son of God, he remains a priest forever. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so, not by a law expressed in a commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. For it is testified, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek. The scepter of your power, the Lord will stretch forth from Zion, rule in the midst of your enemies. You are a priest priest forever forever in the line line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. Yours is princely power in the day of your birth, in holy splendor. Before the day star, like the dew, I have begotten you. You are a priest priest forever forever in the line line of Melchizedek. Melchizedek. The Lord has sworn, and he will not repent. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. You are a priest forever, according to the line of Melchizedek. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus entered the synagogue. There was a man there who had a withered hand. They watched Jesus closely to see if he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. He said to the man with the withered hand, come up here before us. Then he said to the Pharisees, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath rather than to do evil, to save life rather than to destroy it. But they remained silent, looking around them at them with anger and grieved at their hardness of heart. Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately took counsel with the Herodians against him to put him to death. The Gospel of the Lord. We've been taught that anger is one of the the great seven sins, the capital sins. Sins that are so grave because they can lead so easily to other sins. And we can see all around us today the effects of that kind of anger that leads people to violence, to hatred, to destruction. Many, many results come from harboring anger in our hearts. And in a particular way this week we We are praying to God for the gift of peace and understanding and greater love. But even Jesus, we hear in the scriptures on occasion, got angry. We hear one of those episodes today as he comes into the synagogue and encounters the man with the withered hand on a Sabbath day where nothing No work, no effort could be put forth on the Sabbath day except to pray, to praise God and to offer sacrifices. Is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day rather than to do evil? It seems like a simple question. To save life rather than to destroy it. 
but they remain silent. And their silence is their judgment. Jesus is angry because of their lack of compassion. It happens again in the temple when he overturns the tables. Not because they were selling things in the back, which often had to take place. The doves and other things that needed to be bought to offer for the sacrifice, but Jesus gets angry because they are taking advantage of the poor. They have no compassion. They're cheating, charging way more in the temple of God than what they could have gotten somewhere else. Jesus' anger speaks to the lack of charity that he encounters in the hearts of those who should know better. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, it's a reminder to us of the call every day to be people of compassion. Charity is the greatest of all the virtues because it sums up all of what we believe and who we are. It's why the Eucharist that we celebrate every day is called the Sacrament of Charity. We encounter the love of God given to us most fully and completely in the body and blood of his son, the real presence, the enduring and saving presence of Jesus. He's grieved at their hardness of heart. They can't see the need to help a person standing right in front of them. They would rather stand on the law, the letter of the law, rather than help someone in need. It goes against everything that Jesus teaches. He came to preach the good news of God's saving love. And we know that he cures diseases, raises people from the dead. But the gift Jesus desires to bring is the gift of forgiveness and mercy. The love that will soften our hardened hearts and enable us who have received such a gift to offer our lives in love one to another. That's the Christian call. We honor Fabian and Sebastian, two of the early martyrs of the church. Fabian, one of the first popes, and Sebastian, who was a Roman soldier who converted to the faith because of the witness and the love of the Christians who were being put to death. He admired them. He saw their bravery, their willingness to offer their lives for the faith, transformed Sebastian, and he too went to his death just like them, out of love for God and others. The sacrifice we're called to offer every day is not our prayers, they're important, not just coming to Mass to fulfill an obligation or the letter of the law. It's important. It helps. But the sacrifice that we need to offer is our compassion, our love, our charity, our kindness, our love for one another to bring God's saving love into the world by the manner of our living, our witness, of saving life rather than destroying it, doing good rather than doing evil. Every chance we get, one person at a time, it's the task of every Christian. Let's pray for the grace to do that each and every day. And so we lift up today the prayers of the church. We pray that God will hear and answer his people in their need. Please respond, hear us, O Lord. For the Holy Father, Pope Francis, may Christ continue to guide his leadership of the church throughout the whole world. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all those who serve the law, May God's guidance inspire in them a renewed commitment to the value of human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. 
For all those who struggle with disabilities, may God's strength accompany them in their hardships. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all of us gathered here, may the Lord strengthen and sustain our faith in all we do. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all the faithful departed, may they soon find peace and joy in God's presence. And in particular at this Mass, we pray for Marjorie McCord. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Hear us and answer us, O Lord, in your great mercy. May the love that we receive in the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, most especially in the Holy Eucharist, enable each of us more deeply to love one another and to bring the gift of your peace into the world. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, and may the gifts that gave both Fabian and Sebastian courage under persecution. Make us too steadfast in all our trials through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth, sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the host of angels and saints, cry out and without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Pleni sunt celiad in terra, Gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, with David our Bishop, with all the bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Paul, with St. Sebastian, St. Fabian, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the whole Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus Christ, 
of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. and purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. Through this heavenly sacrament, O Lord, grant us manifold grace 
on the celebration of the blessed martyrs, Fabian and Sebastian, that from so great a struggle we may learn to be united in unwavering patience and to exalt in the victory they won for love of you, through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the divine power of God, cast into hell Satan and all of the evil spirits who roam throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls, amen. Just a reminder to please put your kneelers down as you leave Mass uh, for the help of our cleaners and sanitizers uh, who do such a wonderful job for us each day. Today is a big day for our country uh, as a new president is, uh, in, takes the oath of office. We pray for him, we pray for our country, for all in elected office that they may serve the country with dedicated and faithful hearts. And so we pray to Our Lady today for the United States. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join us singing hymn number 686, Lord of all hopefulness, verses three and four, 686. Six.